Hello everyone and welcome back to my let's play of Sherlock Holmes Crimes of Punishments. And last time we arrested someone who is suspected of the murder of Peter somebody. And um, now we are here to interrogate him. Is that Locked. And I don't actually know where I need to go. Uh, it's not you. Is it here? Ah, yes. Mr. Nelligan. Yes, let's uh, take... Oh, that's a lot. Well, he has a shabby cap. And... A patch. Am I missing something? Thin neck. Okay. Short sleeves. Expensive fabric. So this is not his jacket. Um, I'm missing one. Uh, scars. There. Elaborate buttons. So yeah, that that coat is definitely not his. Does this notebook belong to you? Yes, but where did you find it? I did not know. I I, I thought I'd lost it at the hotel. What do these abbreviations mean? Oh no! I beg you, I can't. If I told you, it would only make things worse. But I will find out if And it's already bad for you, so who cares? The sea knife was found near Carrie's body. Tell me, Mr. Nelligan, did Mr. Carey try to defend himself or to attack you with it? I don't know. I didn't kill anyone. Well, hmm. I will see you soon, young man. Please let me go. I am innocent. Sure. Well, he might be. I don't know. Uh, evidence room. Can I go there? Ooh, I can. Oh, now the belongings, belongings are here. So you have the notebook. On Peter Carey's cabin floor. These abbreviations mean something, but what? Maybe we should ask him. Oh, it has something uh, from R. Dawson to my friend and partner, 1883. And partner, 1883. From R. Dawson. To my friend, Dawson. I've seen this name before. Perhaps my archive holds the answer. Do you have an archive? Oh yeah, wasn't his uh, his collection of newspapers? Wasn't that the... Uh... A pocket knife. It was used to force the door of Peter Carey's cabin. Oh, A look at that. With the initials J.H.N. So that's John uh, something Nelligan. Hopley. So what do I need to do? Inspect the crime scene, investigate the murder. Okay, so I'm done interrogating him, I guess. But uh, it can't hurt to talk to him again. Now I know a little bit more. The police seized this valuable ring from you. Whose is it? I didn't steal it from anyone. It, it has always belonged to me. Okay. Uh, Carrie's boots? What? 
It has always belonged to me. Rings engraving. From Art Wilson to my friend and partner. 1883. Um, didn't... Um, What's his face? Uh, this guy stopped working in 1883. Retired in 1884. So it might be his. So it's from a colleague. Or Dawson. Is she a Dawson? No. Successful steel and wheel hunter. Now the gun is approximately 18 years old. So it's 1895. I don't think it, it's his. It might be his father's ring. It may be that jacket is also his father's uh, uh, no <laughs> select the correct answer okay the police sees this can I skip this Who's it? I didn't steal it from anyone it, it has always belonged no. to me okay well let's talk about the engraving the I ring guess. date of engraving is many years ago you would have been a child then, hardly in any position to receive such an item from a partner. So yes, who's the ring's owner? So, Mr. Nelligan, who is the true owner of the ring? The ring is mine. Okay, so... I don't know what those boots have to do with it. No, Mr. Nelligan. I believe that the ring had belonged to your father. Oh, but, but, but how do you know? The jacket you are wearing is made of an expensive fabric that only a man of exceptional wealth could afford. You do not seem to me to be a rich man, Mr. Nelligan. Furthermore, the garment is ill-fitting. It is quite clear that it belonged to someone else, most probably your father. With your father gone, and taking with him the family's wealth, as a little boy you had to find yourself a manual job, and it was most probably cleaning fish. You cut your hands often while working, I can tell from the scars. I'm speechless, Mr. Holmes. It, it all happened exactly as you say. I don't know. Well, I will see you soon, young man. Okay, let's, uh, let's move. Okay, what do we have here? An elegant notebook. A notebook with blood stain on its cover indicated that it was dropped into the pool of blood after the murder. Belongs to Nelligan. Swift actions. Peter Carey was armed with his knife, but he did not have time to use it. The murderer acted quickly and instinctively. Um. Several unsuccessful attempts were made to break in according to the scratches around the lock, pinned to the wall, and a harpoon. Maybe that this one plus the swift actions. Task experiment required. We need to find out whether an unskilled and untrained man could use a harpoon well enough to kill f to kill by fully piercing a body. Okay. I need to stage a reconstruction. I am sure that Watson would be happy to oblige. Prepare harpoon for throwing experiment. Uh, do I need to go to Watson first? Because I, because I, well, I wouldn't be surprised actually if Sherlock, um, if Sherlock has harpoons lying around in his uh, apartment.
How about these two? Huh. It actually did something. The break in attempts were made in order to recover the notebook that had been lying in the pool of victim's blood. This proves the guilt of the person who made these attempts. I wouldn't say it proves the guilt, but it doesn't make it look good. Uh, yeah, I don't think these things have something to uh, connect it right now. Ah, there you are, Watson. A spot of whaling, Watson. Would you care to take part? Are you serious? No, but we do need to clarify what happened on the night of Black Peter's murder. A reenactment, then? Is something bothering you? The sailor's knife, Watson. Why was it on the floor? Peter Carey attempted to defend himself? It is possible, but if that is the case, then it alters many things. Does it? I don't quite follow you. Tell me, my friend, what is the animal closest to man, morphologically, I mean? Ah, I see what you're getting at, Holmes. You asked me that once before. On the Ripper case, I believe. Do you want to slit some more pig's throats? No. Thank goodness for that. I wish to impale one with a harpoon. Wonderful. <laughs> Watson. Come on, Watson. It's going to, going to be fun. In Whitechapel. We require the carcass of a well-fed pig. And the harpoon? One of the harpoons on the wall of Black Peter's cabin should do quite nicely. Okay. Um, let's go to Woodman's Lee. Well, Mr. Sherlock, is it an uh, interesting book? I wonder what he's reading. But we've arrived, so... We can stop now. Footprints? Oh, do I have those things with me? These boots don't match the footprints. So it's someone with uh, uh, These larger. These footprints appear to be quite large. Okay, evidence required. The more stuff like that. Okay, let's uh, make a quick scan of the um, area. I somehow doubt that a lot of them will be like very far out of the way. Uh, maybe that woman has uh, something new to say. Mind. Uh, all right, woman, whatever your name was. Uh, eh. there's some new things. Is this your husband's tobacco pouch? 
I'm not sure. It might be. But he hadn't smoked in a very long time. Your husband's private papers. Do you know where they are? There was a small tin box, barely larger than a book. He and it's missing. There. It should be somewhere in his cabin. Thank you, madam. Huh. The ship's logs of the I feel like I need to do something with the to with the logs. Peter Carey was her captain. That should do it. Now I am ready for the experiment. Are you? Yeah. Okay. So the box with the papers is uh, actually gone. So, oh, what do we have here? We have quite a bit of evidence now. Investigate the murder. Seems like I'm done with inspecting a crime scene, so I think I found everything here. Harpoon throwing experiments. Okay. So yeah, I'm um, investi oh, investigating what um, what's his face has to do with it. Nelligan. Are there new things I can uh, be to carry a non-smoker? Missing tin box. No? Okay. Uh, never mind. Um, don't think we have enough. I do like that it just continues loading. So you actually have something to do. All right, Watson. Let's let's do this. Well, here we are in the preparation room. I can't say that I like the smell of it much. What do you intend to do? To indulge myself in a little experiment, the challenge of lancing a pig's carcass with a heavy harpoon. A little experiment. Stand aside, Watson. This might be dangerous. I am not well practiced in this exercise yet. Okay, what do I need to you do? For the mark in order to perform the most reliable test. All right. Hold breath. Oh. Holmes, you should try to aim better and throw as hard as you can. Yeah, no shit. Um Okay, so that was a little bit off. Okay, so I need to aim a bit higher. The harpoon has struck the body, but with insufficient strength to pierce it straight through. There. This is the best possible result that I could get. Do you see, Watson? Throwing a harpoon and pinning a man to a wall requires either exceptional strength and training or diabolical luck. If it was luck, then it was a chance of a thousand that night. So well, what? Yes. Let us leave now. All right. But before we go, I, I suppose I'll have to pay for all these carcasses you've happily mangled. Very well, but please hurry. <laughs> of course. <laughs> But still, uh, you know, a chance one in a thousand, it still happens one in a thousand times, so I don't see the problem. It's unlikely that it happens, but, you know, not impossible. 
What, what do I need to do, actually? Uh, back to Scotland Yard, I guess. Oh, wait. Deductions. So, we have strength requ strength requirement and pin to wall. Let's see if that connects. It does. Oh, some effects may be interpreted differently. You can always change the picture, blah, blah, blah. Oh, okay. It requires a much greater strength than that of the average man to be able to pierce a man's chest with a harpoon all the way through through to the wall a degree, yeah degree of skill would most likely be necessary two men in cooperation might achieve the same result there's a remote possibility that an unskilled and untrained man could manage to pin peter carry to the wall with a harpoon yeah i i uh, i you know it's possible but i don't think the game does that i think it's the single man or maybe even two men Okay, do we have more? Uh... No. But yeah, I believe that in this game it's actually possible to be wrong. You know, about who is the actual killer. What am I doing here? I've done nothing wrong. Okay. Well, actually, you did try and actually, you know, did break in. So, you know, that would probably still put you in prison for about... These are the suspects. I don't know what would be normal at this time. Like a month. These abbreviations mean something. But what? Okay, so I need to find a key for those... Um, Abbreviations. Let's get the murder of Peter Carey. Oh yeah, he he said something about his archive. Don't have anything new. What's this document? Don't have documents yet. Evidence. Dialogues, souvenirs, echoes, and character portraits. I'm assuming these are, you know, the ones that are darker are actually characters involved in this case, and that all the other ones that are grayed out in the lighter color gray are characters from the other cases because you know I don't think we'll meet 20 other characters in this case hey Toby brave Toby the best nose in the British Empire okay archive uh, newspapers Heavy gold ring with the inscription from R. Dawson to my friend and partner 1883. Let's see. First electric railways. Okay. Dawson and Nelligan are bankrupt. Dawson and Nelligan investment fund bankrupt. Nelligan missing. The Dawson and Nelligan investment fund, a regional banking institution based in Cornwall, has declared bankruptcy as a result of heavy losses on in its... L yeah. loan portfolio and has accordingly been assigned for liquidation. It was the 23rd largest bank in Britain and its bankruptcy was the second largest on record. The liquidation of the company is a, a pure catastrophe for many Cornwall families. Joshua Nelligan, one of the bankers, has since mysteriously disappeared. He was last seen aboard his yacht preparing for departure to Norway. Nelligan is wanted both by the police and his creditors. Here it is. Now I begin to understand that young man's story, but I am still unclear as to what connects him with the murder. It is time to ask him. I I do like how he's like stroking his chin, but he 
his mouth actually isn't moving. I, I guess it can be explained that he's thinking it. You know, that that's the only explanation uh, I can think of. But yeah, I really do like that this Sherlock has... Um, <laughs> better social skills than all the other ones in the more modern uh, versions of Sherlock Holmes at least and by more modern I mean you know actually the year it was made and not the setting because Downey Jr. was also uh, a pretty strange Sherlock and that was set in you know this time the Victorian Britain. So Dawson and Nelligan. I have heard the story of Dawson and Nelligan, the West Country bankers. Yes, Joshua Nelligan was my father. I am aware that it had a bad ending. When the bank failed, it ruined half the families of Cornwall, whereupon Joshua Nelligan disappeared. My father was under extraordinary pressure. Dawson had retired. I was only ten years of age at the time, but it was still old enough to feel the shame that befell our family. My father was convinced that he could pay off all his debts if the creditors gave him time. He set sail for Hammerfest in Norway in his small yacht just a few days before an arrest warrant was issued. He left my mother a list of the securities he was taking. No word was ever heard from him again. We believe that his vessel went down, taking with it everyone and everything on board. Thank you for the story, Mr. Nelligan. At last, we are making some progress. So, I guess he met up with, um... Joshua Nelligan and Peter Carey were both at sea in Norway. There is definitely some connection between Peter Carey and Joshua Nelligan. Yeah, probably, because, um... Didn't the, uh, you know, that map... In the cabin also have that route from... Somewhere in Britain to uh, Norway. Let's see. Uh, ship's log. Yeah, okay. Finally, we get to do something with the ship's logs. Anything new? No? No. Okay, let's uh let's figure this out. Eighteen eighty three. That's the one I need. This is the crew list of the sea unicorn. So let's see. Um Peter Carey uh what was I looking for? Nelligan, Joshua Nelligan, maybe something that's not exactly like it, but a little bit Log different. Notes. Log notes for June. Uh, saw a whale tail alongside at southeast. Just a night, two more ships in sight. Saw no whales today. Saw other whaling ship. Log notes for July. Nothing special. Log notes for August. Oh, look at These that. Log notes for August. These pages have been torn away. Canadian Pacific Railway, CPR. A torn piece from a bond certificate. I have seen this abbreviation somewhere very recently. Yeah, in the there notebook. There are ways of discovering what happened in August of 1883 aboard the Sea Unicorn. The first two of these will require speaking with a dead man. The last would be to locate vital witnesses 
the sailors involved in this whale hunt campaign. Uh, what do I need to do? Wiggins might help to find the crew of the sea unicorn. He should be somewhere at Baker Street. Uh, all right. Can I actually just travel like this? Yes. No, it doesn't look like uh, there are any new deduction options. Something new, Watson. Ah, I have the list of sailors happening. who were aboard the Sea Unicorn. We shall soon learn what happened to Nelligan's father. I have only to find them. Let us hope they are still working at the harbor. I think that if you pretend you're from Scotland Yard... I doubt it, Watson. And really, I would prefer that all of this remains quiet for now. But I have another solution. I'll call in the specialist. And who might they be? The secret police division of Baker Street. Ah, you mean young Wiggins and his gang? Yes. Believe me, you'll receive more useful assistance from these little urchins than from a dozen yard detectives. Those children are everywhere. They see and hear everything. And they are cunning. All they lack is organization. I'll summon them. And that is what he provides. There is always a watch beneath our window. I have only to call him. Okay, let's call him. Wiggins, could you come upstairs, please? At your service, Mr. Holmes. Wiggins, I need you to track down certain people for me. I'll give you a list. You can read, can't you? Big Oliver from our gang. He can, because his father is the coachman of a famous lawyer. Fascinating. Here is the list of sailors. <laughs> he doesn't care Jeez. at all. Easy. Just got to look where the rum and the red lights are. Sorry to trouble you, Mr. Holmes, but the inspector asks that you come to the station as soon as possible. Why? Thank you. I'll be there shortly. So... The Strat might have some new facts about the case. Okay, so I have to go to uh, Scotland Yard first. Can I make... Oh, too late. Okay, I'll do the uh, deductions a bit later. Because um, it's actually time for me to stop. So um, next time we'll uh, talk to uh, Lestrade a bit more about this case. Hopefully get some useful information. And uh, we might actually solve the case in the next episode. But for now, I want to thank you guys for watching. And I'll speak to you guys later.